<laughs> All right. Um, I understand the minister is, uh, is finally got through and we're going to bring him on and hopefully he'll have some great news for us. Uh, the Honorable hey. uh, John Yakabuski. Hey, John. Hey, Angelo. Pete, how you doing? Good, buddy. Good day, buddy. We're up at uh, Sturgeon Lake. Now it's an opportunity to tour around Muscat Island to firsthand the devastation that uh, cormorants have done to that island. And also the fact that uh, not only to the island itself, but the the effect they have on fish stocks, uh, 143,000 cormorants in this province of Ontario eating a pound a day each uh, has a massive effect on our fish stocks. Today wow. we announced that we'll have a cormorant season uh, open from September 15th to December 31st, 2020, to give people an additional tool uh, to help control uh, that population that has been growing in many areas of the province, uh, static in some other areas, but not shrinking anywhere. And since I've been an MPP for 17 years, that's one of the questions I've been asked repeatedly is, when are we going to do something uh, to control the cormorant population that is devastating uh, property and islands, particularly islands here in Ontario? 344 colonies in the province uh, continuing with that devastation. We've listened to the people. We brought in a, a, a season short to a, a reasonable season, September 15th to December 31st. All regulations surrounding it, you cannot... You know, you cannot abandon the, the bird once it's uh, been uh, harvested. You must uh, dispose of it properly, uh, limiting uh, to 15, uh, a bag limit of 15 per day. So I think we've, we've hit the sweet spot, Angelo, based on all of the feedback we received, all for those in favor and those not in favor. But I think we've, we've landed in the right spot. And thank you for having us on your, your new blog oh. show. Oh, I, I, thank you for for sharing that with us, uh, John. We've been talking about while we we're waiting for you this morning. We we're talking about uh, the the whole philosophy behind it, and 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 how um, you know it's it's pretty easy for most people who are not into the outdoors. Most people who don't hunt and don't fish and don't enjoy nature for what what, what the same way that we do. It's pretty easy to say, "Hey, like, what do you mean you're going to call the cormorant?" Like when you think about it, you know, if you if you don't understand it, it's pretty easy. But when you start looking at it, you just mentioned some numbers there that are staggering. If you just think well, one hundred forty three thousand pounds per day, uh, that's about the weight of fifty small cars, Angelo. Uh, when you put it, uh, anybody wow. can relate to that. And and we recognize there are some people that oppose. But Angelo, you and I know there are people that oppose the harvest of any uh, yeah. of any animal. Uh, and uh, we respect that everybody's entitled to their views but if they live on one of these lakes or if they visit one of these lakes even if they vacation on one of them and see the effect and the number of birds on that lake and the smell around those islands that they inhabit oh. uh, the effect oh. of it is uh, is is absolutely uh, breathtaking no pun intended because i was trying to hold my breath when i was going <laughs> around that island but it it uh, I, I think People have a right to be able to enjoy their property, and without any real natural predators uh, in the in the ecosystem, uh, steps had to be taken. And this is not—we're not going to endanger the population of cormorants. We're going to make sure that there's a sustainable, safe population. But we don't—we can't have uh, situations where literally, where I was today, thousands of cormorants in one small island. I mean, that's just—that's uh, just not not just. I don't think anybody can argue that that's not a healthy situation. And quite frankly, even the Ministry of Health has agreed that there have been some illnesses uh, uh, transmitted in the water from around those islands uh, that they're not 100 percent certain of the origin. But we certainly can't rule out that the amount of guano that is uh, and droppings around that area uh, has an effect. What's the range, John? What's the range of these birds? Like, is it, I know that we used to see them up in Kenora. You see them down in southern Ontario. Are they all over the province or are they just in certain areas or? No, no, pretty well, pretty well all over the province, depending upon the time of, uh, you know, they're later, the farther north you go, the later they're going to get there and the sooner they're going to leave. But these are migratory birds. They come as uh, Mexico, they winter, even as far as Chile. I'm not sure if the Chile ones come here, Chilean ones come here, but they're, they're, a, they're, a, they're a bird that is a, a certainly a problem uh, in many areas. And uh, we're the first government that has recognized the need to take some measures to give people an additional tool in that toolbox to help control them. Uh, in their in their environment, John, I, I was going to ask you, to the best of your knowledge, has anything like this ever taken place before in this province, where where the government I, has come in and said, I'm "Hey, I'm not aware of this. I, I'm not I'm not aware that there's ever been a cormorant hunt because, Angelo, you and I are roughly the same age. I know that, 
<laughs> you look a lot better, I have to admit. But in our lifetime, I there's never been anything like this. No. But but we when I when we were growing up, we didn't have an exploded cormorant population either. Cormorants were something we barely heard of. Yeah. And uh, so since since the 1970s is when the, they they really uh, exploded in, in in population and numbers. John, are you at liberty to give us any other details in terms of, of you know, are there going to be res restricted areas? Is, is there a certain size of, of, uh, of uh, uh, a projectile that can be used? Like, what are the rules and regs on yeah, this? Yeah, ma maximum, uh, uh, maximum uh, 10 gauge, um, limits per day. You must dispose of the, of the carcass. Uh, there are a number of other regulations that will be released as well. And to be fair, I don't even I don't have all of them on the top of my head because we just uh, finished uh, uh, making the announcement. But uh, uh, they will be posted uh, for everyone uh, to see plainly as well. Has there been anything uh, before we let you go? Has there been anything talked about regarding you know you mentioned disposal? Is there any value to to can they be you know repurposed for 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 food for maybe animals or? I've heard that I've heard that that uh, that. Uh, theory uh, potentially talked about. Uh, I don't have any uh, real data on it. Uh, okay. Most people would never eat one, to be quite honest with you. It uh, would be not the most appetizing uh, thing to uh, uh, to eat. Uh, but uh, there is some talk of some potential, uh, just like dead stock animals are used in the, you know, in, the uh, in the animal feed business, perhaps. But I don't have any, any concrete data on that. Okay. You, you, um, you know, if, and you know, if your if your Labrador retriever goes out to, to pick one up, turns around and turns around and says, "I'm not bringing that back," you know that thing's not good to eat. Okay, just to let you know. <laughs> when your dog, that's, when your dog that's will good, pick that's it up, that's a good yardstick, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, um, go ahead, John. Go ahead. I, I was going to say, do you think this would have been possible? And, and I, I don't want to sort of make up scenarios here, but do you think this would have been possible if we weren't in the middle of this this insanity called a pandemic right now? Do you think this was part of the thinking here, or or, or how did you deal with it? Oh, well, we actually we actually passed the legislation uh, last November. Uh, okay. It was part of our legislation in the fall economic statement. The pandemic uh, and the uh, needed time to uh, get the regulatory stuff in place. Uh, slowed it down, but that's in a way that was a good thing because I think it gave us the opportunity to make sure we get it right. So before I let you go, one last comment I want to make. Now that we've got the cormorant situation done, do you think we're going to have a two-rod carp regulation somewhere in the future? Well, well, I'm ready for it. I need uh, I need the cooperation of my federal uh, federal uh, counterpart in the uh, uh, federal government, but uh, we're certainly continuing to press on that. Uh, and the pandemic has said what it wouldn't have happened this year, even if we did have the authority, uh, sure. because of all of that, uh, most likely. But we're still very hopeful for next year, Angelo. Perfect. Listen, um, we we appreciate you doing this with us today. I know you're right. You're up to your elbows and stuff up there. Uh, for you to take a break just means so much to us, and I know our audience absolutely appreciates it. Keep up the great work. I've told you before. Uh, thank God we had this government in place when we hit this little roadblock in our history, uh, I wouldn't want anybody else at the helm looking after us right now. So keep up the good work. Thanks, Angelo. Appreciate you having us on. Take care. All right. Take care. Uh, the Honorable John Yakubuski coming on our program and breaking it live electronically. How thrilling is that, people? That is awesome, buddy. That is so awesome. What a great guy. Eh? What a oh, great guy. John he's is... Uh, he's uh, down to earth. Right from the very first day that, that he was appointed. And, you know, he came in right behind another really great uh, minister, as far as I was concerned. Um, and so I was a little bit, eh, you know, when, when they first put him in, because I didn't know John prior to uh, to him becoming yeah. Minister of Natural Resources. Jeff Urich, if you recall, was, was the minister for a short period of time, and Jeff was outstanding. Uh, but I got to tell you, John is just, he gets it. Yeah, he understands. Good. That's so refreshing to, to have a yeah. politician who understands.